Hey there, in this video we'll be learning about instance overriding in sequences. This is something that's very useful to know when you're working with sequences. Let's say in your game you have a player instance that's controlled of course by the player. Then you create a sequence where the player is doing something. So now you wanna play that animation in the game. So you run the game and move around with the player. Now when you play the sequence animation in the game, this happens. It creates another player instance and now you see two separate players. One is the actual in-game player and the other is the one created by the sequence. So in this video, we're gonna learn how we can use the actual player in the sequence and avoid any duplication. I'm gonna be using the same project that I used in part 1. That part was a basic introduction to sequences, so if you wanna go and watch that, you can do so here. Now in my sequence, I used a sprite for the animation. But of course, for this example, we need an object. So I'm gonna delete this sprite track. Now I'm gonna go into the asset browser and here create a new object. This will be o bird, so I'm simply creating an object for the bird. I'm gonna assign the sprite to it. And now I'm gonna use this object in the sequence. So I'm gonna recreate the animation with this object. It was a basic animation where the bird collected an apple, which we created in part 1. And now the animation is ready. Now we're gonna go into the bird object and we're gonna make it controllable. So in the object, I'll add the step event. I'm gonna add some simple mouse input in this event. First, I'm gonna set the image angle so that the bird faces the mouse. Then I'm gonna set the direction to be equal to the image angle. So now if we set the speed, then the bird will move in this direction. And I'm gonna set the speed if the left mouse button is pressed. Else the speed will be zero. So this should be enough player input for this example. I'm now gonna go into the room and place an instance of the bird here. And now I'm gonna run the game. And now we have a playable bird instance that can be controlled with the mouse. In the previous part, we did this for playing the sequence in the game. So when I press space, the sequence should be played. I'll go back into the game now and press space and there we see our sequence. Of course, as I said before, it creates a duplicate player. But first we wanna make the bird in the sequence appear at the correct position. So it should appear on our bird instance. Now to fix this, I'm gonna go into our manager. Here we have the key press space event where we create our sequence element. This is where the sequence is created in the room. So we are simply creating it at 0 by 0. But now we wanna create it on the player. So we could just enter over.x and over.y and be done with it. But to be more clear and more specific, I'm gonna get the player instance first. So to find the player instance, I'm gonna add this here. Now I'm simply using instance find to find an instance of this object. This is the number of the instance to find. So 0 means that we're gonna get the first instance of our bird. So now we can place the sequence element on this instance. I'm gonna come here and replace the 0 and 0 with the x and y of the player instance. So this is where the sequence element will now be created. And now we should also go into the sequence and make sure that the origin is in the right place. So right now the origin is here but it should be on the bird. So when you place the sequence element, it'll be placed using this origin point. And now I'll run the game again. So here we have our controllable bird. Now when I press space to play the sequence, the bird will appear in the right place. But of course we still see two birds when there should be only one. So we're gonna use a function to replace this bird in the sequence with the bird that we already have. Now to do this, we're gonna go back into the event where we create our sequence element. We use layer sequence create to create the sequence element. And this function also returns the ID of that sequence element. So we can simply store it in a variable and that's what I'm gonna do. Now this is only the sequence element. To make any changes to the actual playing sequence, we need to get the sequence instance. And this sequence instance will be a struct. The struct will have all the information about the playing sequence. So to get the sequence instance struct, we can do this. So 
So here we are using this function to get the sequence instance struct from our sequence element. Now to know more about this struct, you can middle click on the function and then go to this page. You can read this to learn how sequences work in GML. And there's also a section on the sequence instance struct that we are using. So now back to our code, we have the sequence instance here. We can use this to replace the bird in the sequence with our own instance. So for that we have this function. First we need to specify the sequence instance struct. Then the second argument will be the object that we are replacing. So this will simply be or bird. And then the third argument will be the instance that we wanna put in its place. So this will be our player instance. So now the OBird instance created by the sequence will be replaced with this instance. And this way we'll only see one bird and not two. So I'll go into the game and press space and the animation was now applied to the same bird. So no matter how many times you play it, you won't see any duplicates. But now we have another issue. While the bird is being animated, we can still sort of control it. You can see how the bird faces the mouse even during the animation. So in this case the player should take no input while it's being controlled by a sequence. And the solution for this is very simple. So we're gonna go into the bird object and then into its step event. Here we're gonna make use of a built-in variable called in sequence. If the instance is being controlled by a sequence then this will be true. Otherwise this will be false. So we only wanna take input when this is false. And we can simply do that with a condition. So now the input will only work if this instance is not in a sequence. And now I'll run the game. I'm able to control the bird right now, but not when I play the sequence. And when the sequence ends, I can control it again. So our animation is working perfectly. And that's it for this video. I'm gonna be making more videos on sequences, so make sure to subscribe and turn on the notifications. You can also check out more videos here and here. So I'll see you in the next video.